Mark chapter 6. Jesus went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, and among his relatives, and in his own household. And he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. Well, with chapter uh, 6, uh, Jesus uh, comes to his hometown and we get a snapshot of the way that people respond uh, to Jesus. Uh, they're, uh, first of all, astonished. Uh, and it's interesting that uh, they're not astonished when they see his miracles. They're astonished at his teaching. And uh, this little paragraph at the beginning of 6 uh, uh, begins and ends with his teaching. And throughout Mark's gospel, we're seeing this focus on Jesus as well as being a miracle worker. Uh, he is a, a teacher and a preacher. But they're astonished at his teaching, which you might think is good. But actually, it leads them to uh, to take offense at him. You know, where did he where did he get this learning? Uh, what is this wisdom given to him? And then they connect the teaching to his miracles. How are such mighty works done by his hands? And that's another important thing that we see in Mark's gospel. It's not as if the teaching and the miracles are somehow disconnected. They're, they're uh, together underline his authority. He teaches with authority. He's someone who does uh, miracles. And they take offense because they know him. They know his family. Uh, and uh, so that's that's the conclusion at the end of verse three. They take offense at him. So there's astonishment. There's a there's a kind of astonishment, a, a kind of being impressed by Jesus. But in the end, it it uh, it leads to offense. And um, later we're told, uh, verse six, Jesus marveled uh, because of their unbelief. He marveled because of their unbelief. Now Jesus realizes that a, uh, a prophet, obviously he's more than a prophet, but he's not less than a prophet. And a prophet does not have honor in his own uh, time. And it says that Jesus could not do any mighty work there. I don't think it means that his power was somehow limited. It means that people didn't come to him and uh, didn't ask for uh, for miracles. But even, even saying that he couldn't do any uh, mighty work there, except that he laid uh, his hands on a few sick people and uh, healed them. Uh, again, uh, you know, even when Jesus is kind of restricted in what he does, uh, he's still healing people. So we've got that reaction of Jesus and uh, G uh, sorry, reaction of his hometown to Jesus. And that flows into him sending uh, the disciples out. And I think we're, we're to sort of read those two together that, you know, we're to expect that the disciples are going to face similar um, rejection of their message because what Jesus sends them out to do is, in a sense, to do what he's been doing. They're to, uh, to preach. Um, uh, verse 12, we're told that they proclaimed uh, people should repent. Jesus has um, spoken about uh, repentance. Uh, he's, he gives them authority over the unclean spirits. And so when they go, uh, verse 13, they cast out many demons, anointed with oil, many who were sick and healed them. So um, we, we have the disciples, in a sense, uh, going on mission and uh, extending Jesus' um, uh, ministry. And th this is a parallel to, to what we see in Matthew 10. It's uh, the disciples going out and doing what Jesus had done. But they can expect uh, a uh, mixed reaction. Verse 10, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. If any place will not receive you and will not listen to you, well, then uh, shake off the dust of your feet as a testimony against them. Uh, Mark's gospel is, uh, is a realistic gospel. Uh, even the Lord Jesus was uh, opposed and um, derided in his earthly ministry as Christians. Uh, can we expect uh, anything less? The rest of the chapter gives us this uh, wonderful um, uh, comparison of Jesus and Herod. So we've got the account of the death of John the Baptist and uh, Herod, this kind of weak, ineffectual king who doesn't want to kill John, but get you know makes this kind of rash oath and then has to uh, to kill him. In contrast, Jesus, the caring king who miraculously, just like God did in the desert, miraculously feeds, um, uh, provides for uh, the people. So I think those those two kind of uh, uh, 
uh, paragraph, oh, there's two sections, uh, contrast uh, uh, Herod and uh, Jesus. And then we have uh, the account of Jesus walking on the water, uh, one of his most uh, famous miracles. And uh, again, it, it just it reveals his uh, divine uh, nature. Obviously, um, you know, only um, only God can walk on water. Although um, in Matthew's account, uh, you know, he asks uh, Peter to do it and Peter stumbles and falls. But there are details in the text that really do underline uh, Jesus uh, uh, divine identity. There's just a really interesting little uh, phrase in uh, verse 48. Uh, By the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. He meant to pass by them. Okay, they uh, they react and they're t- terrified. He reassures them, take heart. It is I. Um, I am. And, uh, you know, he gets into the boat. Uh, the wind uh, ceases and they're utterly astounded for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. No, just a few, uh, just kind of three things to notice there. He meant to pass by them. Why does why does Mark include that? Why, why that little detail? Um and uh, their reaction is that they don't understand. Uh, Richard Hayes uh, has pointed to uh, Job 9 as a possible uh, kind of Old Testament background to this. In Job 9, he's talking about God, and he talks about God as the one who trampled the waves of the sea. Job 9, verse 8, and then a few verses later in verse 11, Behold, he passes by me, and I see him not. He moves on, but I do not perceive him. So here we have Job saying, God is the one who uh, tramples the sea, but I don't understand his ways. Maybe, now, you, you know, we, we can't be sort of 100% sure. Mark is the, the type of elusive writer who draws these connections without kind of signaling them. But maybe here we have uh, Jesus behaving as God. He is the one who walks on the water, uh, passing by or meaning to pass by and uh, the, the uh, disciples do not perceive him. And then there's the uh, the address that Jesus gives, take heart, it is I, uh, uh, in the Greek, I am. And again, a, a sort of natural thing to say, but also a little bit loaded from the Old Testament in terms of how God uh, reveals himself to Moses in Exodus 3, uh, 14, I am who I am. So those little details, I think, point us to um a, a fuller revelation of Jesus as uh, as divine. And uh, worryingly, though, uh, the disciples uh, do not understand and uh, their hearts are hardened. And we'll see in chapter seven uh, how serious that is. And the chapter ends uh, with Jesus doing uh, more healing in the uh, the region of uh, Gennesaret. So the picture we're getting in, in uh, this uh, chapter, mixed reaction to Jesus uh, we shouldn't be surprised about that. To Jesus himself, to the disciples whom Jesus sends out. Jesus' uh, powerful compassion uh, presented as in, in real contrast to um, Herod's uh, weak um, uh, and uh, vindictive behavior towards John the Baptist. And then Jesus, as he walks on water, uh, reveals himself as uh, the God of the Old Testament Uh, to the confusion and hard-heartedness of uh, the disciples. Isn't it wonderful in in just this this chapter uh, in uh, in Mark's gospel, as Mark recounts these different events in Jesus' life, we're getting such a a rich picture of our Saviour in whom we can trust. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you so much for this uh, wonderfully rich picture of uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, your Son, uh, equal with you in, um, in deity, And uh, we thank you for his uh, authoritative compassion as he uh, feeds the 5,000. And we uh, thank you that we can trust in him for all things. In Jesus' name. Amen.